Hey there, welcome. Thanks for joining me. If this is your first time to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and also click on that bell button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and share with friends and family. So today I'm so excited because I've been wanting one of these geometric wood signs uh, pictures for a while and I finally figured out how to make one. And I'm so excited to be able to share it with everyone. Um, what I did was recycled one of my pictures that I already had a picture frame. And what I'm going to do is use the backing of this picture frame. And I also ordered some painter sticks from Amazon. And I'll leave that link down below. And I cut off some of the handles of my painter sticks and also left some as is. First, I measured out um, the center of my backing and then I just went ahead and drew um, lines to make four squares on the backing of my on my cardboard and the reason why I did this was just to give me first of all to find out where the center was so I could start my uh, design from the center and also to give me a guide of where each side was and how many painter sticks I needed for either side When I started this project, I wanted to make sure that I could do something without having to do so much measuring because I hate measuring things out and also not having to use so many power tools or any at all, if possible. Um, I went online to try to see if I could find uh, some DIY tutorials on how to make these and I, a lot of them used a lot of power tools and a lot of measuring. And like I said, I just, I'm not good with measuring and all that. So I wanted to make sure that I could do something and show you guys that it's possible to do something similar to this without having to use so much uh, measuring and power tools. So basically this is all the measuring I did was to measure the middle and the center of this cardboard. Now, of course, you can do it the other ways. This is just my version and my way of doing this. So once you've figured out where the center is of your um, backing, go ahead and use that as a guide. And now what I'm going to do is start adding my painter sticks. Um, and what I did was basically start with the larger painter sticks, the ones that I did not cut. And I went on to the center of my um, backing and I decided to use one of the painter sticks right at the point of the back just like this and then I guide, use that as a guide to add the rest of my painter sticks and instead of cutting each one of the painter sticks as you can see all I did was just butt in both corners or edges onto the painter stick so you just use the um, edge of the painter stick that doesn't have the handle part and just start adding them and stacking them kind of like a pyramid. Now once you get down all the way to the bottom, what I did was start using some of the painter sticks that I had already cut the handle part off. And then I did what I did was the center of the, the bottom, you can um, trace them out and then cut them each one individually if you like. But like I said, I didn't want to have to cut so much and measure out so much and then, you know, hopefully it would fit because like I said, I'm not very good at measuring. So what I did was I just started gluing them onto my backing. Again, making sure that that center one was on um, right at the middle of my um, board and or yeah, my backboard. And then I just started doing my pattern again, making that pyramid by uh, connecting both edges together. Then I just started gluing the rest of my painter sticks using the same design.
and I just glued one at a time making sure that all the edges were connecting together to form that pyramid design. And what I'm using to glue these and attach them to my board is basically wood glue. Um, you'll see that I stopped using wood glue because I ran out and I started using E6000. So you can use wood glue, E6000. You probably could even use hot glue, um, but this is what I decided to use. If you do decide to use your hot glue gun for this project, let me know in the comments below if it does work. Um, I'd be interested to know. That way, if I decide to make one, maybe I'll just go ahead and use my hot glue gun instead of E6000 or my wood glue. So once I start getting down towards the end of my pyramid from the first stack that I started, what I did was I started using the um, handle parts that I had already cut off of the larger, the longer painter sticks. So that's what I used for the bottom part, just to make sure that I didn't use um, any more than what I needed of my painter sticks. So go ahead and allow that first pyramid to dry. And then once you've allowed it to dry for at least a good 10 minutes, then you can start working on the other side. And what I did was from the same point, the center point, the first uh, painter stick that I attached, I'm going to attach the other painter sticks to that one to form my other pyramid on the opposite side. So I added one to the side and basically added the other painter stick right on top of the uh, first one. And then I went ahead and started making the same design by adding one painter stick to one side and then adding another painter stick to the opposite side to form that pyramid shape. And you just continue this process. Now, the one thing that I can tell you is, um, and I'll add both links down below, because there are painter sticks that don't have the handles. And if I would have thought about it before, I would have ordered the ones with no handles. And um, it would have, it wouldn't have had that gap at the bottom. If you can see where my painter sticks are having, um, making a gap at the edges, but it didn't bother me once I painted it and everything, it just added to that design. But I think uh, next time I do something like this, I will add, order the painter sticks with no handles. So I'll go ahead and leave both links down below, the ones that I did order, and another um, link of the ones with no handles if you want it that way as well. Again, using the parts that I had already cut off of the other painter sticks, those little handle parts, and that's what I'm using for the very last of my pyramid shape. Once you're done with that side, go ahead and allow it to um, dry for at least a good 10 minutes again. And then basically what you're going to do is just move it to the opposite side and then start doing the same process on that one. I wanted to form some kind of design that would be nice and something that I wanted, but also easy to do. And um, I just love this pyramid design. I don't know if you want to call it pyramid design or mountain design or just a triangle design, but it's the same thing. So I just went ahead and started gluing onto the same side, the opposite side, I'm sorry and doing the same process again. And here's where I decided to start using my E6000. And again, I'm just trying to use up the last bit of my E6000 before I open up a new tube. But go ahead and just um, start adding whatever glue you decide to use and then just continue with your pyramid try, um, shape. 
I had seen some of these designs on Z Gallery and um, just different air, different stores, and the least expensive one for some something similar to the size that I'm doing, which is a 20 by 30 again, um, were running between 180 to you know 280 and higher depending on the design and this the colors i guess and just different i am um, stores they were just really really expensive but i love the way it looks so I, like again i was so happy to finally figure out how to make something like this on a budget and you know it looked pretty and be something that i would be happy to hang in my on my um wall And another update about my living room. So this is going in my living room and it's almost complete. So hopefully by the end of this month, I'll be able to give you guys a final tour of everything that I've done and also all the DIYs and show you where I've placed them and where they are going to be called, um, where they're going to be in my home. If you guys remember, I have basically two living rooms side by side and I wanted them not to match perfectly, but um, I did want it to flow a little bit better and just have the same kind of design basically on both um, living rooms since they are, or you can make them into one huge living room if you wanted to. So yeah, I'm almost done. Um, I'm just going to go to the thrift store and purchase a few more items. Hopefully I can find them and I will be making a tutorial on that as well. So stay tuned for that one um, coming up sometime this week where I will be going and looking for a few more items that I need to give it that final touch. And then, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to show you my final um, living room update very, very soon. So once you're done adding all your, your um, painter sticks to your board, you have two options you can do here. If you don't want to cut them and you want um, to leave it as is and make it that design, which you'll see how it looks as soon as I'm done with everything and it's all dry, it does look pretty and it is something that I wouldn't mind having in my home, but it wasn't something that I wanted for this for my living room. So what I did was I basically allowed it to dry and this is the way it looks if you wanted to leave it as is. But what I did was once it was all completely dry, I flipped it over. Now I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do this. One way what seemed a lot harder than what I thought it would be, which is basically get my box cutter and cut each one of my painter sticks individually just by scoring it and then um, wiggling a little bit until it basically broke off and this did take a while so what I decided to do instead of doing it this way was I just grabbed my handsaw and I put the uh, decor right on the edge of my table or just at the end and I just saw it off and this way was so much easier once I got into the groove of how to use the saw and everything. It took me maybe 10 minutes or less to do the entire uh, four sides of my project. So I would recommend you just grabbing a handsaw and just going ahead and do it this way. Or if you have the power tools, go ahead and grab a saw and it would take a few minutes if you wanted to do it that way. But this way worked just fine. Um, again, I just sawed it out until I had a groove into all the pot of the painter sticks and then just wiggled them off. So what I decided to do is once I figured it out, I just put it on the edge of my table, which made it go a lot faster. And I just started moving, um, wiggling each one of the painter sticks until they came off once I sawed it a little bit. And this way, I wouldn't have to worry about having that perfect angle and making sure that all of them were the same to fit my board or the backing of my frame.
Again, this is just the easiest way I found how to make one of these geometric wood uh, wall decors. If you guys have any other ideas of how to make one of these um, easy, just leave me in the comments below how to do it because I am planning on making two more of these uh, in a smaller size, a smaller scale to add it to my second living room. So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions or ideas of how to do this um, even easier than what I've already done it. So what I did was using and recycling the pieces that I already cut off of the edges, I'm going to fill in the rest of my board to make sure that everything is covered with wood. And then once I found all the pieces that I needed for all those gaps, I glued them onto my board and then I allowed them to dry and then cut them off the same way I did for, um, we just did it a little while ago with the longer ones. And there's my mall, my Luna again, trying to grab the little sticks that fell on the floor to play with them. <laughs> so yeah, but again, just using your E6000, go ahead and add all your little pieces of wood to cover up all the gaps that you have on from your backing. Once everything was done and cut off, what I did was just grab a piece of sandpaper and just sand it in all my edges and basically sanded the top of my wood just to make sure there wasn't any glue or anything um, that was in between the pieces of wood just to give it that smooth finished look. Now this looks beautiful just as is if you want to put a clear coat and have it something like this more of a natural look. I think it looked beautiful um, once I started seeing the video. I wish I would have left at least a part of this like this or thought of using it this way as well. Um, you can even maybe stain the pieces of wood different stain colors and just make some lighter and some darker if you want more of that natural um, look. But what I decided to do was paint mine different colors and I used a dark gray, a black, a metallic silver, a white, and then also a brown. And one thing that I would suggest you guys do before you glue all your painter sticks onto your board is to paint each one of the painter sticks individually before you add them on. That way you can paint all the edges and um, all the sides as well because it did take me a few coats and a very, very thin brush to go into those edges and finish them, give them more of that finished look. Um, so I would recommend you guys paint all your um, sticks before you glue them onto your board and also just kind of figure out what design you want. That way you know what sticks you need to paint, what color. But the good thing is you learn as you go and that was just something that I learned and I you know, wanted to share with everyone, just go ahead and paint your sticks before you glue them on to your board. It would make things a lot easier and basically go a lot faster after you figure out your design. But it isn't impossible to do it this way because I did do it, but like I said, it did take um, an extra coat with a very, very thin brush to make sure I got all the edges done. But if you're going more for a farmhouse style, which I'm going to show you guys how it would look farmhouse style before I paint everything um, again and edge it. So you'll see the difference of the pictures before and after if you want it like the farmhouse style. Here I am just painting some of my pyramids um, brown. And what I did was just kind of work and play with the paint as I went. I really didn't have a design per se of the colors of how I wanted them. I just knew I wanted something with um, some of the colors that I have in my living room just to kind of blend them all together and make them all kind of match and know that those are the colors that I'm using. So um, again, I use the brown, the dark gray, the white, um, a metallic silver, and then also just um, a brown color and gray and the metallic, yeah, those were the, oh, and black, I'm sorry. Those were the colors that I used. 
So here I am just doing the brown and then a white and a gray color. And that's basically the pattern that I used on both edges. Now you could do it on all four of them if you want. And But what I decided to do was make a large X in the center. And then I just started playing with the paints going away from that large X in the center. Let me know what colors you're going to paint yours or are you going to do more of the stain look? Here I am adding the black. So basically when I did the black, I made it more look like an X. So I painted the other side black as well. And now I'm painting the metallic. And as you can see how it looks more of the gaps in between that brown, you can still see it after you paint. That's when I had to go in with the fine paintbrush to give it more of that finished look and paint all those little gaps. So like I said, I would recommend you guys paint all the sticks before you glue them on to your board. And also depending on how dark you want your colors, um, I, I only gave my paint um, design one coat of every color and then I sanded it down and then I went in and painted it again but if you want the farmhouse style look basically all you have to do is paint it one coat and then grab your sander like I did here my little sanding block and I just sand it down to give it more of that rust that um, faded farmhouse old style look and that would look great in my kitchen, but I wasn't going for doing this for my kitchen. I was doing it for my living room. So like I said, after I sanded it all down, I cleaned it up and then I went in and gave it more of a finished look with uh, the paints again. But if you want it farmhouse style, simply you would be done after you wiped it down, you would be done and you could just hang it in your um, frame that you decide to use for this. I also gave it a paint of the clear coat from uh, Waverly Chalk Paint also. And this is my final look with the second coat when I painted all the edges. So I hope you guys enjoyed this simple wood art that was a, it's pretty big size, again, 20 by 30. Until next time, you guys stay blessed. Bye.